So welcome at Firecatchers on May 15th to our book, book club online. We, have, we are discussing uh, Flagging an Audience Unto One by Marsha Liffborough. Lif 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 okay. Um, she's written this book, published it, self-published, and I thought this is a great book for us to discuss and invite Marsha to join us for the group. And so welcome participants, fire catchers, and welcome, Marsha. Thank you. Um, I hope you have questions. I wrote down a, a few of my own questions, but Marsha, um, just take it away. Tell us, tell us um, what's life like now as a published author? <laughs> what's life as a published author? It's been something I've wanted to do for a really long time. So I, I feel like I've, Man, I've accomplished my goal that I actually have a book with my name on it. So I haven't done a real, a real lot of work in the last month of trying to push it, but it, it's, it's nice to have accomplished my goal. Fantastic. Well, we thank you. Um, so in the beginning, you said you had, I'll start off with some of the questions. You had said that you felt God was from the Lord to write a book about flagging after he brought it in back into your life in February, 2019. So tell us your journey with flags and how, how it came out in February, 2019, that you were to write a book. So, a couple years ago, we had gone to a fire and glory conference in Nino, Wisconsin, and they had a lot of flags there. And they had like this one person had these big angel wings. There was lots of people doing flagging there at that, um, weekend conference. I mean, it was awesome. It was really beautiful. And so I had used the gold, their gold flags. They had flags there for people to use. So even between services, I would just go around and flag in the room over the chairs and stuff. So that was my first real exposure. And then um, one of the churches in town in Chittack, um, that's well, we used to live in New Auburn. So that was like 11 miles north. Now we're, we're 11 miles. So I'd be about 22 miles. So they would, um, they were missionaries church and they had flags. And so the YWAM group, when they would flag with a lot of some of the services. So I use some of their flags now and then, but that then it had been quite a few years. And then last year in February, the Methodist church here in town, um, Dita Shattaker, she had started a women's ministry. So they had a conference and then Martha Spangler from Eau Claire. Um, she was one of, um, speakers and she she gave her testimony on being saved not saved healed using flags so she spoke about the flag she had flags and when i was the cook that day and so um i didn't get to do too much with them but in the after lunch i did get to use them a little and when they got back in my hands it was yes i re remembered what it was like in nina having the flag so that was that started it. So then I started looking all your stuff up and looking it up and researching it. So that's how then the books got started. So I did a lot of researching from February to July. Okay. I, and making flags, I started making flags. And so that was, that's where the, all that started because it was like, and Walter had never flagged, the Walter flags as much or more than me. Okay. <laughs> And he worships, he does worships with his flags. So he does a lot. He does a lot with the flag. So he's he's got his own his own pile. He likes flagging. Mary can relate. Her husband Roger is also flags too. So I think we can all relate to that, to even that that moment that God reveals something to us, right? Can I just get a uh, a yes or a nod or a, a comment from anybody else who has, when they're flagging this revelation um, of God revealing something and moving out and doing it. And what's, I, I know, I do know that I haven't always been proactive with the revelation that the Lord has given me, but Marsha's done it. Uh, I don't think not always, like I do. I just want to say I do, but not. <laughs> immediately sometimes um but you actually move forward and then this is this is the finished product um anybody else have questions that 
comments, something that really stuck out to them, to you about the book? What's nice is it's a, it's a short book actually. So it's, um, it was easily to, it was easy to read it and, and digest it. Some of you may not, I know there was a lot of kind of purchases in the last week, but. The other thing was, the Lord attorney was to be more than just flagging because we need to know like believers authority, spirit, soul, and body, um, baptism, the Holy Spirit. That's all really important in flagging and in a Christian's life. So that's why all that got added. So it was, that was a main thrust as well, but it was, it was just to gear towards flaggers, you know, because I, I believe in the believer's authority. We have the, by Jesus name, we have the authority to take authority over stuff going on and, and we need to know who we are. If you, if you're participating and you have a comment, you can, I'm trying to keep track of the chat that you can pop it into chat, but you can also just unmute yourself and ask the question yourself. <laughs> oh. Well, I don't have a question, but I wanted to say thank you very much for writing the book. Uh, I've had the uh, privilege personally of having a personal relationship with Jesus for many, many years. And also, as Andrea said, uh, my husband and I uh, have also had the privilege of expressing our worship with flagging for uh, probably about 25 years now ourselves. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I find, especially being a grandmother and now a new great grandmother, uh, mm -hmm. your book is such an easy read and yet covers such depth that I find it uh, that it's going to be a wonderful tool to give to those who are relatively new believers or those who perhaps uh, have been believers for a while but have not had access to some of the depth of your teaching. So from that perspective, I, I wanted to express my thank you and uh, gratitude for your efforts because it, it is going to be a wonderful tool to share. Thank you. Yeah. So it, it accomplished its goal. <laughs> so that, you know, and then having part two in there of, of um, just to make a flag because I did a lot of research and looked at a lot of websites and watched a lot of Andre's stuff. So there's lots of references in the back. So you can, I actually did put on my Facebook audience onto one Facebook page there. I copied and pasted them all in there so that you can just click on them. Um, so that's on there. Hopefully I'm not really good at that Facebook page, but I tried. So, um, but, but, uh, but that's, you express the goal of the book, you know, to help new people and to help flaggers get started. Just make a simple flag and expand from there. I just want to say I've been flagging like for 20 years and your book uh, it defined me in a way that uh, you put in word how I felt, but I couldn't express it. So even if I've been flagging for so many years, your book was uh, a blessing to me because like I said, you express, there's sentences there that I highlighted that uh, really um, put in word how I felt in my heart and I couldn't put it in, in words. So. Thank you. The Holy Spirit wrote it. <laughs> I'm from, um the other end of the scale and I don't have any flags and I haven't purchased the book or anything. Um, but um, yeah, the Lord's just had it on my heart um, since lockdown pretty much to, I mean, I, I have had that on my heart um, flagging previously and I, I kind of envisioned like one day a big field of like women with flags just dancing freely and um, being set free somehow. Um, and so, and then all of a sudden it just came back to me. And so I've been following a lot of people on Facebook and on YouTube, but there really hasn't been anything come out of New Zealand. Like I can't find any people flagging in New Zealand, you see. So it's like a whole new, and I'm thinking, well, Lord, it's like a whole new thing here. Well, I did see one lady try, but 
that's about it. So I follow a lot of people from over in America and overseas, but here, and I just think, wow, you know, after the, we're not going to be the same after the lockdown. There's, you know, there's a big sh there's, we're shifted, you know, and so it's going to be a lot more freedom in these next coming years or so. So we're going to be expressing ourselves more. So I've just put it on my heart to start flagging. <laughs> so, but I'm yet to get all the materials, and I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely going to read your book. Yes. Thank you. So thank you. Do you have a um, page that we can follow you? Or a face? Yeah, no. Well, I started a, a f on Facebook, audience onto one Facebook page. Um, mm. I've done a little posting on there. I try to go on, I've put stuff on, oh, one. It's where it was. Sell, people sell a lot of stuff on that one. Cat yeah, I've lost a few. Natasha, pages. I'll have, I'll have links. Okay. I, I, I'm so I'll probably get it up back. Uh, I can probably get it up on the site tomorrow with link mm. uh, to her page and the book. Um, so yeah, that will, you'll be able to get it. You can get it in an ebook too. And it really is, um, it's 60, 78 pages. Yeah. Not including the references. So it's, it's great. There, there were for me a lot of like I I'm in Canada and we do have flaggers but Marjolaine don't you think that there's not a lot in in Canada as well uh there's like little pockets and not like in the United States well mm. I I I was in Toronto before at the Toronto airport so there was flagger there I move in Quebec and now I'm teaching to kids so I'm starting a new generation of flaggers. Good. But oh, for my good. generation, I must say I'm pretty much the only one. Yeah. I I do find um, you didn't actually talk about children in the book, but it's interesting. It's important to raise the children up to to become the next flaggers. But if we don't have adults, it's only going to become a kids a kids thing. So when you grow up, then you put the flags away. And so, um, and understanding our, I, like, the authority that we have as believers, there was, there was, you said one thing. That's the thing, when you teach kids, it's important to teach them to hear the Holy Spirit. That's the first thing mm -hmm. I teach them. Before flagging, uh, you have to re make them realize to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and then you start teaching them all. There, oh, that's so good. Very, very good. good. You, you write something in here, oh, on page 34, and you bolded it, so it was very helpful. <laughs> but I, can, yeah, I wrote some notes too. Um, that, we're, that we're equal with the Holy Spirit, not to, but with. Be, we're, with, it, it actually said into words, but I'm like, this is this is what I've been trying to this is what the Holy Spirit's been telling me is that we are never equal to God, but with Holy Spirit. Um, Holy Holy Spirit's in us and then we then with him we are equal um, because and this makes sense when you think about of, that we're the bride you don't have you have to have two two equal parties in a marriage. Uh, so how how can we these you know our dirty us who are dirty um marry the you know the prince of prince and if if we're not equal so but the holy spirit is our equalizer he he indwells in us and he makes us that um i, I really loved that that chapter uh, a few other things that i found was that this is an interesting one for I think it's a discipline that I would actually even like to challenge flaggers to do is that you can flag to music or without it. And right. sometimes some of my most powerful worship times have been when there's been no music. And um, I, I find like right now during lockdown, it's been an interesting thing. Like we've been seeing like there's, we have a lot of, 
there's kind of two different kinds of camps in among the flaggers and fire catchers. There's those that are free form and free flow without praise garments or not choreographed and and then there's the ones that are choreographed and it's beautiful and both are both are Holy Spirit. Uh, it works and, and moves. But the ones that have chore are choreographed dances, um, it's hard, it's and it's a new form to worship outside free form. Um, and so, but we've been seeing this because we're all in lockdown. So there's been this force of if you want to worship, but this takes it a step further. So I, I loved that challenge. I'm like, I have done it. It's been powerful. Uh, has anyone else ever worshipped without music, just their flags? You're just challenging me now. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I've sometimes, in, before I went to bed, just in my living room, just was flagging and man going at it through the Holy Spirit. No, because it's worship unto him. It's worship. It's worship. But you it, but you don't even realize probably in the spirit realm what are you doing with it. Okay. When you're worshiping him with your flags, you don't realize probably all the stuff that you're changing. Changing in you in your home, changing in your city. Who knows? What's what's happening through the colors of the flag and the the movement of the flag and, and your communication with the flag to the father. So it's. So I know I've um, danced with, you know, cause when I have low ceilings and before I was comfortable with flags, I've always used my arms in like a flagging motion. So it was really like, it was so funny because it was like God just put the flags in my hands. Like <laughs> you're, you're already doing it, you know, right. the sticks. And um, so I loved, you had a scripture in the New Living Translation, I think. And it's Psalm 63. Daily I will worship you passionately with all my heart. My arms will wave to you like banners of praise. And I was like, it's right there it is. <laughs> <laughs> that translation and and it is um and you talked a little bit later in there too about um seeing people worship where it's like the flags become an extension of of the person and i just love that visual and i feel like that's i love that scripture for that reason too i was really i love that you had that in there thank you yeah I actually highlighted it because I never read it in that translation and I loved, I really love that translation of the, that verse where they say that we use our arm like a banner. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, Psalm 63, that, per, that verse? What yeah, you? Psalm 63, 4 through 5. That's what I, 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 <laughs> outlined that. I'm like, why have I never seen this? I know. I was like, I, it's, yeah, if I did, it got lost again. So I was like, hey, hey. <laughs> Yeah, love that. I, I also, I mean, there was a lot of things that I really enjoyed. Um, on page 16, about, it talks about the tent of the Ark of the Covenant remained in Solomon's temple until, was, until Solomon's temple was built. But the door, Lord doesn't like to be kept in a box. He wants to be among the people just like he was in the tent. He wasn't locked into the Holy of Holies. He was free among the people where the Gentiles could experience him. They could see the light of the presence shining under the tent posts through the legs of the priests and the Levites as they worshiped around the tent. What an awesome sight that must have been for those who listened and watched what took place and it ministered to them. And I thought of that like when we, because we've been taking our flags outside, particular during this lockdown, that's what happens. Like, and I do notice, like, I worship on my, um, Actually, I've been worshiping quite a bit more at the beach. Um, and I have generally people will come up uh, and, and chat, but with so many have, have come and said that it was just like a, a, a burst of well, color and they could see it from far off down the beach, that it was just enjoyable and they, they enjoyed it. So what it must have been like, right? Like, right. fantastic. It was really paralleled, I think, the lockdown. God's not in a box. 
We can't go to church. No problem. I uh, I usually sing with mine whenever I'm flagging. I will. I might start without, but usually I will either sing. I'll start praying in tongues, or I'll start singing in tongues because I like to do that a lot with music as well. Because I find myself somewhat of a psalmist, and I, you know, and I, I sit down and I write worship songs while I'm while I'm seeking God and everything, and and this is becomes like an extension of that. I'll do that for a while, and then I will start using the flags, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll be be singing to the Lord or or making uh, declarations at the same time. Marsha, can I ask what it, revelation or insight surprised you while compiling research for the book? Surprise me? Yeah, if anything. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I guess there was no, I mean, I listened to almost all your classes <laughs> before I wrote it. I did. We went, to, I, I printed them all out and went through all your classes. So it, it was to, to learn about what the colors meant. Okay, that was exciting to learn because I, that was off many sites too. So, but just having the scriptural reference, just, you know, what it all meant because I had used those flags in Nina, but I didn't know any of this. Okay. I didn't know any of the, what the colors meant. I just, I just had used them and enjoyed using them. So to go through and learn all what everything meant with the flag really, you know, enhanced it, the flag. It's true. Like the more, you know, the layers, I mean, the more, I mean, yeah, the more, you know, about the layers of how God is in every detail and, and it just enhances the, and there, there was times when I was reading, I'm like, Oh, it just makes me want to worship. Like, I was thinking about you as you were writing. Did it make you go, wow, I just want to worship now. Like put that, you know, put the computer away and just worship. No. <laughs> you, I mean, when you're focused, you're focused. I'm, I, you're I was writing, focus. right, yes, because I had like all my notes. and But you talked about, I think in one of your, about the language, you know, and then one of the prayer groups, we had a prayer group on Tuesday night, it's now here was that another and the, the one lady she's an art teacher and she made the color the comment of because uh, she teaches her kids the colors have a voice and that was the first time I, colors have a voice so what what are you saying you know and you talk about it being a language yeah that language that language of speaking to god and you don't have to say anything you know You can talk to God without saying a word. Do the flags. And that's, I mean, I think that that's one of the challenges of, of flagging without music, like not using someone else's words, but what are you going to be saying with your movements and the colors that you choose or whatever? Like, it'll be, maybe we'll issue that in our a challenge in the fire catchers to see what revel, what revelation does the Lord give to you if you, if you, you know, do make it a discipline try it as a discipline experience the lord in a different way um using your flags what blessing have you received um since from the lord that you that since finishing the book so you he gave the revelation in in 2019 you did the work um have you seen a blessing or have you experienced Yes, it was like people are interested in reading my book. That's amazing. <laughs> and you know, and I've gotten some other comments from you know others, and it was like, well, it, it's a really good book. They tell me it's a really good book, and it's like sometimes well it's like well written. It's hard to to take that on or cope with that, you know, because I like because I always don't have a good self image, you know, that I actually wrote something that somebody's going to read. Think we're hungry we're hungry for more of this kind of thing right yeah there's um have you have you learned when you're doing your research have you or since even publishing since the print have you 
Have you come across more revelation that you'd like to study further? I, I've got another book almost done. I'm in chapter seven. It's called Ownership. Who's the captain of your ship? And so it's all about who is God, who is Jesus, how to get rid of your junk, which the Lord has been telling me since 2012. Get rid of your triggers, get rid of your junk. And so that, and then ownership and prayer. And so that's, and I see it more and more. And then um, Benny Johnson, her book on the happy intercessor, that's kind of, that started there because she's, she talked about ownership and prayer. So that's the last chapter of the next one, but I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with it. So I'm not, probably won't use it all. So I'm not exactly what, I'm not exactly what sure what to do with the book once I've got it wrote. It's challenging writing a book today um, because you get hardly any pay. Yeah. There's hardly any pay once I paid to have the book published. Um, it costs me quite a bit. And so then, and then like if it's sold on Amazon, I get 10%. So it's, it's um, I'm not sure what form to do it in next. I like having, I like having a, a, a book in my hands to read. I'm not an ebook reader. So, but we're just praying. We're just, but I almost got done. I just want to say, Marcia, me too. I'm not an ebook reader, but with the coronavirus, I wanted to make sure it was delivered. So that's why I. Sure. <laughs> <e -book. laughs> I mean, that's a lot of people, that's is of today. So I had chose to pay for the format. So I did have an ebook. But I have other, I have other things in me. I'm just not sure what to do with them. It's like, um, it's, it's, it's this, it's this, the market, it's the thing. It's not what, how much work now to try to market a book when you don't make no, hardly nothing on the book. Once you, um, Dove, I get more that I know I, Andre had put the Dove link in because I do get paid more from, if it's bought ex, from the publisher, but, and that, then that made me also realize because I buy a lot of books off Amazon. I buy used books, but I do buy other authors' books, and I realize, oh, I need to go to their website and buy it from them directly instead of buying them off Amazon, because once I realize I get little or nothing for the book off Amazon, then they aren't either. So that changed, that helped to change my perspective on the book marketing part. So if I really want to support a ministry, I go to their website and buy it from them, don't buy it off Amazon, um, because that's, there's, you don't get much. I didn't realize that because I didn't know what the price of the book was when I wrote it because the Dove establishes the prices. They put the price on it. You know, I don't have any say. So I thought, well, okay, I only get 10%, but we'll see what I get. So, because everybody's got to, I understand, everybody's got to have their part. That's part of the business thing. So that is the only, that was the real challenge of now what to do next. I won't pay for a lot of marketing because there's no income to pay for it. But I'm glad, like Andre, you, you put it out. I, I bought a bunch, a bunch of books to be able to give away, um, to be able to promote it. So, thank you for doing this because this is, promotes it, and I can put on face on um, a few Facebook pages. So, somebody has a conference. I may send them some free books to promote it, to give away, that kind of thing. Yeah, I do know that if you are writing a book, you probably really need to hear from the Lord that you're supposed to write a book because you're most likely not going to, not going to be, um, you know, well, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a labor of love, but the Lord can do something else with it, right? Like the, right. Um, I mean, it, but I know you and Wald are just so generous all of your life, but generous in your finances and definitely in, in your, in whatever you have, like you serve, uh, for those that are kind of have just joined us for the first time ever when Marsha and Wald have been on, um, they serve, they go into a church and they just start serving right away, like gardening or back the on the back end like they are just beautiful humans and beautiful believers and they and they help their community with 
actual practical hands-on stuff. So uh, I, I do hope that, that you, I mean, the flagging community is still small. It really is small. We're, we're growing, but we are growing, we're growing. And so we need people, we need books like this. So this is, this was fantastic. So I know um, Bobby Muncie, because I've been communicating with her, she hopes to start a bookstore, she put my book in her, her store with her flags and stuff. So that, I'm thankful for that. She's, that's what she's trying to work on so that it gets put out that way. I, I mean, I'd give them all away if I had the finances. <laughs> I just give them away because, because God's word is so important in this, all this teaching that I've learned in the last, well, Walter and I have been married almost 20 years, but I didn't know any of this before. And I didn't probably know any of it like 10 years ago. So to, to learn this and to put it out to, so people would know it because it changes your life and to be able to put it out for flaggers. I know it's a niche market. It's not huge. I knew that from the start, but it's like, if I can help one person <laughs> with a better relationship and worship with the Lord, then it's, it's worth it. One. I've done a lot of things that just one. And you've done a lot, Andre. You, I mean, you're you're a big part in this book. <laughs> I, I, you are. I, I just want to say for the record that is not why I'm promoting the book. Okay, just because I know. it's mentioned in print. <laughs> but I learned a lot from you, how and and and, and doing this book history and all kinds of stuff. And Rosie, I got her testimony in here. I thought, well, that fits. It's one of the biggest thing I wanted to say was her testimony. She just put it together. And she let me put it in the book. It's, I mean, it's a community, right? Like it, it, what I love about the flagging community and Natasha, if you're still here, um, even if you are like around the world, it, there is a community, um, not as many, I mean, United States is definitely the highest proportion mm. um, of kind of concentrated flaggers, but we are, we are, I mean, I've, I've shipped to 25 different countries and, wow. and so, and I'm just one flat, one of the flag makers. So it's, that's what I love about the community is I know most of the, or I know many of the flag makers and other flaggers and it's, we help each other, right? Cause we need this kind of work. Yeah. Oh, well, Marcia, yeah, I'm going to be buying your book. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll probably be the, the person that you help. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm just so new to it all. I just feel like I've just got this horizon of well, knowledge to you know. It's, I don't know. I just feel so new and gifted that you know I can be a part of this. So um, yeah, it's exciting. It is exciting. Well, be the be the seed. Be the seed in your area to start and get others. Because it changes, it changes your life. You'll change then as you get excited and you, even if you make a flag or get a flag and give it to someone, I've given them quite a few flags away, <laughs> two or three churches. I've made a whole pot, bunch of them for them. Um, you can make it out of other stuff because I've gone to Goodwill. People have gone to Goodwill and brought me scarves and then I made a flag for them out of it. So um, mm -hmm. there's other things to be able to use. I've got a bunch now um, that I, I made. A friend gave me a whole pile of scarves. So, I just put them together and made a flag, but my twin's on here and I got her flagging. Amen. So, and she's done other stuff. She, are you, can you hear us, Marty? Or she probably can't talk. Her, her, her. her. Let me unmute you. You've, there. Yes, I'm there. on. So, <laughs> yep, she got me flagging. So, one of the one times we went to my um, son's house and, and, um, last year about this time yeah. and flagged over the dog we just flagged to the house and it was amazing how the two dogs were so calm after that that we were just flagging so we flagged without music that day they weren't home and we were home in their house babysitting my granddaughter so that was fun and we walked the beach we flagged that day with no music so yeah that's awesome well, well, then, because you had the flags and, and dying, you, you started making scars to take to the, where do you go? You went to the jail? Uh, 
treatment center for um, women that check themselves in for six months. Then I would go <laughs> and I took, um, I dyed purple scarves and for purple to be the daughters and, and to take them and be a part so that they feel, um, be a daughter and um, just feel God's love. So, but you, thank you. You got other people flagging too, right? Yes, I've had, yep, I've had a couple other friends, yep, so, and I remember in the past flagging at retreats, a couple of retreats um, in um, Colorado, and then here, so yeah, we had flag. Bring back memory. <laughs> Anyone else have a comment or a question or uh, insight or? A Me Too comment that they want to make? It may, um, in my church, my, my pastor asked me to do, a, I did a PowerPoint to explain to the church why I was flagging and the color, what the signification, the, signi the, the color, why I'm using such and such color and uh, Sometimes I would flag over the kids and I was explaining to them, I'm not doing that just to be funny. I, I'm praying for them to be a worshiper when I do that. And, uh, and it helped. A lot of people came at me after and say, I didn't realize all the impact of the flagging. So that helped if you can uh, ex express it in front of the church, the, why, what it's flagging about. I, what I, and that's fantastic. What I think that the greater congregation or the, you know, believers who aren't flaggers really need to also understand what flagging is. And unfortunately, if you're, that's not your interest, you're not going to pick up a book about it or have an opportunity to learn about it, which is really too bad because it really does matter for everyone, not ev I mean, it's the, the worship team, not everyone plays guitar, but the ones that can play guitar and lead music, they're important for all of the church, just like flags and the flaggers and the intercession, like inter worship intercessors are important. Um, um, and the more that you know, like I, what I really appreciate what you've done with the book, Marsha, is just educate flaggers on the role that we take, the authority that we have, who we are, that um, we're not changing the atmosphere. Even the, the, the tools, some of the tools are anointed, we're anointed, but it's the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit that changes and shifts the atmosphere. And as we understand it, the more that we understand, the more effective we will be in our workshop. Yeah. Um, it never ceases to be worship, but lots of, like, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in it as we worship. And, and you helped us understand baptism of the Holy Spirit and the blessing and all of our authority, who we are. So that was just really fantastic. So I want to say thank you. Like what Mary said, we appreciate that you've written this book. Um, and I, so normally I, I pray for you, but I am going to ask you to pray for the flaggers. Would you pray a blessing um, for us, Marsha? Okay. We just ask you, Lord, to bless all the flaggers as they come in, in, in your presence through the flags that they would be touched. If they need healing, heal them, Lord. If they have problems in their life, just give them revelation through the flagging process of how to deal with things. It's just that because flagging brings us into your presence and we just we just want to enter more and more into your presence. So we just thank you, Father, for this this beautiful gift that you have given us of flagging. And we and we thank you for all the flaggers, all all the information I found online. And then some other books on flagging. We just thank you for that, Father. And I just bless them in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much. You're um, welcome. We're going to end it. So if you have any other questions, comments, or 
Either that's what it is. Either a question or a comment. <laughs> Ask now or say it now. I just thank you all for participating and being interested in my book. Thank you. And I want to just remind you if you have purchased it or are going to purchase it, um, I'll have I'll put it up on the website. It'll be in the Firecatchers uh, group. We'll, we'll, with the links to where it will be found, but all the links will be there. And if you do purchase it, uh, send me a copy of your receipt, either a print book or an ebook, and I will send you a $20 gift card. Well, thank you for that. That's pretty cool. All right. So, um, Mary, I sent you a text. Um, so, Thank you so much. Thanks, Marsha and Walt, for joining us, for writing the book, for Thank all you the participants for the that joined us and who will be watching later. Um, have a great weekend. You too. And, and pray for me what to do. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with the next one he's given me? You know, yeah. help me to discern and pray for discernment. So how, what, what am I supposed to do with my next book? So yeah let's let's just pray right now father okay. we thank you for the revelation and the insight that you've given to marcia uh, as she's doing research that she has passion for writing um i pray that it would be um that it would be a, a financial blessing to her that um she's her and walt have given so so selflessly their their all of their life their finances their resources their talents and their and their um actions in love and service um or that it would be a blessing to her that it would be um give her focus give her um some people to come around and help her with marketing because that's a whole nother area um that that you're teaching about kingdom business and what it looks like and what we can and what we can um partner with the holy spirit that it's all part of it um it's the revelation of the writing but it's also the focus and and knowledge of, of marketing and how to how to pursue your kingdom in the release of it so that many people will benefit and that there would be um, a widespread revival wherever her books are, are, are purchased and read. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Amen. See you guys. Yeah.